Okay, I hope you're doing well. It is Sunday the 15th of May and as per usual, just going to take a look at what's expected for the week ahead because actual major weekend news flow has been particularly quiet. There's only one story on Brexit to update you on ahead of talks with UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson in Belfast on Monday. But otherwise, yeah, very much a continuation of the general themes that have been playing out in markets. Obviously, quite a substantial rally seen in US equity markets on Friday. Just looking at some of the percentage changes on Friday and the Nasdaq that 100 of course finished up around 3.65 percent but on the week finished down about two and a half percent all the three major indices again finishing lower across the board in the u.s as the world acclimatizes to this idea of higher inflation slowing growth and interest rates rising which has been the main culprit for the sell-off across all asset classes of late also of course the the stable coin breakdown that we saw crypto bit of a bounce over the weekend got the likes of solano and cardano up around eight to nine percent going uh, into Monday session. Bitcoin as well is trading back just short of the 31,000 mark ether around 2100 uh, at the moment. But yeah, let's get straight into it and talk about some of the headlines for this week ahead. And so, as I said, Prime Minister Johnson is going to be in Northern Ireland Belfast on Monday. This is some of the headlines that you're seeing in the FT actually on Sunday today that I'm recording this and this comes as ministers are expected to meet in the UK as early as Tuesday to agree a plan and that plan is that Boris Johnson is expected to sign off um, on this idea for a plan for a law to unilaterally scrap parts of the UK's Brexit deal in spite of warnings it could collapse talks with Brussels and spark a further trade war with the EU. Uh, this potentially could come a uh, very particular bad time because as we're going to talk about shortly UK inflation is expected to jump two whole percentage points up to around nine percent accounting for those uptick in energy bills that we've had and that's going to materialize in this week's data and so this cost of living crisis could obviously get exponentially worse if Europe were to retaliate on the trade front with the UK so a lot of this I think is we've just had elections obviously in Ireland we've had a change of um, kind of the most popular party or the leadership I should say was Sinn Féin of course uh, and they're at loggerheads as you would expect with the DUP on the splitting of powers in Stormont at the moment so Prime Minister Johnson going there and I think just trying to insert himself on those particular talks so yeah as, as aggressive as this headline sounds I think it's probably just a lot of um, political positioning going into those talks for this week uh, I would have it a guess otherwise that's it really for the weekend news flow because so going to jump straight in uh, and talk about the week ahead broken up by geographic regions so I'll talk about the US then the UK uh, then we'll talk about mainland Europe and we'll talk about the G7 meeting as well happening this week and then we'll conclude with Asia so starting with the US uh, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell to speak on Tuesday uh, he spoke last Thursday, of course, and a lot of people um, pinning that recovery at the end of last week on the fact that he reassured markets that, look, 75 is not really up for discussion at the moment. So sticking with the uh, obviously tightening, but as a slightly lesser uh, pace of thought the markets were leaning towards only around a week ago or so uh, when the Fed did come out with their, their rate decision. So more of an affirmation of their stance than anything. Um, but given the fact he's going to be speaking on Tuesday, obviously a lot of people will be keeping a close eye on that for sure. Um, other Fed speakers this week do include speaking on the economy and monetary policy, the likes of James Bullard, always one to watch, being much more on the hawkish end of the spectrum. You've also got the Chicago Fed president, Charles Evans, as well, speaking this week. But on the data front, this is the, the chart I'm showing you um, at the moment. This bar chart here is of US retail sales on a month-to-month -month basis. They is expected to show consumer spending held up in the face of higher inflation in the reading that we'll get this week. And this being at the start of the second quarter. Um, additionally, as well, we do get production, industrial production numbers coming out of the US at the same time, or on the same day, I should say, slightly later time. Um, they should be okay, as my analysts are saying, with manufacturing surveys holding up reasonably well amid a long backlog of orders that remain on their books for the time being. Quite a busy data slate, actually, for the US. We've got building permits, housing starts coming out on Wednesday. You've got your regular weekly jobless claims, of course, on Thursday, Philly Fed and existing home sales as well coming out uh, towards the back end of the week. Otherwise, flipping our attention over to the UK, it's going to be quite the fascinating one because just quickly here, looking at the unemployment rate in the UK, and as you can see here, 
um, the tightness of the labor market. In fact, the, the readings that we're tracking at the moment around 3.8% do, do put us at the lowest the unemployment rate has been since really 2019 era, so well before the outbreak um, of the pandemic, of course. Um, and it does go to really underscore the tightness of the jobs market and what that means really for uh, added wage and subsequent price pressures. And what that leads us into then is the UK uh, inflation reading. This is the last reading that we had coming in at 7%, but the headline is expected to jump by two percentage points, taking us to around the 9% marker, this reflecting the 54% rise we've had in household energy bills. Uh, the median actual outcome year on year is expected at 9.1%. If that does materialize, that would mark the fastest rate of inflation since 1982 for the UK. Now, what's going to be quite interesting, of course, is going to be how and what do the Bank of England members have to say about this. We've already had a lot of communication um, recently with their rate decision. If you remember, they said that basically inflation is going to go to double digits. So the direction of travel is actually not that un unexpected. But the um, heads, the rate setters at the Monetary Policy Committee, so Andrew Bailey, the governor, Dave Ramsden, Jonathan Haskell, Michael Saunders, they're all going to be facing lawmakers of the Treasury Select Committee on Monday. You've probably already seen lots of UK politicians, I think it was Liam Fox was one the other day, taking pop shots at the Bank of England, saying what a bad job that they're doing, looking to control inflation. Uh, you could ex kind of expect that from politicians just looking to deflect a lot of that responsibility obviously onto the hands of the Bank of England where of course a lot of that control, albeit perhaps they could have done things differently, um, has been out of their control with these kind of supply side shocks that we've had namely out of Ukraine and Russia and the energy price uh, crisis. But nonetheless I'm sure it will be uh, much of the headlines dominating the beginning of the week. And then taking us over to um, Kind of on the global stage, but in Europe, just given where the meeting is taking place, G7 and central bank governors will convene for in-person for days of talks starting on Wednesday. Uh, the meeting comes in the context of the EU cutting its prediction for 2022 euro area growth and almost doubled its estimate for inflation. Of course, the last time a lot of these heads of state would have met, um, we've, always, we've had the uh, rate rise coming out, the fourth consecutive one from the UK's perspective. We've had this 50 basis point clip come out of the Fed um, and, and so on and so forth with the market fallout that we've had as well. So much to be heard of what they have to say from their discussions and deb deliberations, of course, over the sanctions on Russia uh, as well. And then coming out of Europe, Christine Lagarde, the ECB president, um, she's going to be speaking and also separately the latest ECB minutes can be coming out on Thursday but given the number of ECB speakers we've probably had of late and the fact she's speaking on the same day probably her comments might well and her address um, be more important than the actual dated minutes in themselves. Otherwise a, a quick jump over towards the Far East and China. I uh, have had a couple of data points coming out of China already over the weekend uh, this is kind of setting us up that China uh, will set its medium-term lending facility rate on Monday. Some economists are expecting a potential reduction there. Don't think that would be particularly surprising. Uh, but otherwise, uh, for this week, we've got the minutes of the RBA. You can see here the governor, Philip Lowe, their meeting uh, minutes are coming out on Tuesday, while wages and jobs numbers in Australia are going to be coming out later on in the week and Thursday. And if those numbers do come out higher than expectations, then it could well further ratchet up um, those expectations about faster rate increases to come from the Bank of Australia. And then finally, from Japan, um, we've got some data. Their, their um, GDP numbers are coming out this week, uh, expected to have shrunk their economy in Q1 uh, when that, those data points hit the tape on Wednesday. So that is it. Um, yeah, quite a busy week overall. Feel free to access my Twitter handle just down here. It's got all of the notes um, for what I've just discussed, if it makes life a little bit easier to, to have a review. Uh, otherwise, yeah, pretty quiet on the actual overnight uh, and weekend news flow, I would say. Uh, so still very much an overhang of the general, broader global theme at the moment, as discussed at the very beginning. Uh, and then, yeah, quite a busy week to, to go at for the couple of trading sessions ahead. So yeah, best of luck, and I'll see you for the next video. Take care.